All right, it's business time now with Stephen. Hi, Stephen. Hello, Catherine. We're going to start off with Greece. Rising tensions over Greece's finances. Yeah, that's right. Another crunch week for Greece. We thought we'd been seeing the back of these for at least a little while. Uh, but the Eurozone's finance ministers are meeting later to discuss reforms proposed by Greece in exchange for unlocking the next tranche of its bailout money. But the Greek finance minister, Yanis Varoufakis, has upped the stakes ahead of that meeting by suggesting that a referendum or fresh elections could be held <coughs> excuse me, on the Greek government's economic policies. He sent a letter outlining prospective reforms to the Eurogroup chairman on Friday, but EU officials are said to have given them a lukewarm reception. Greece needs the last €7 billion Euros of its bailout uh, to avoid running out of money. Speaking in Venice on Saturday, Yanis Varoufakis was optimistic, though, that a deal could be found. The most important part is the procedure with which the reforms are going to be approved, applied and judged. There is no question that we want reforms or will carry out the reforms. This is why the Greek people have elected us. How will we integrate our program in a more general European context and in a manner that would be mutually beneficial? That is our goal and we are advancing very well. You know that Mr. Dysselbloom has answered my letter and we are making quick progress with the Eurogroup. Well, staying in the Eurozone, Mario Draghi is bringing out his big bazooka from today. The European Central Bank is to begin buying 60 billion euros worth of government bonds every month in an effort to boost the Eurozone economy. Mr Draghi says the 1.1 trillion euro programme will spur the fastest growth in the euro area in eight years. The value of the euro has already fallen against the dollar in recent times in anticipation of the start of this programme, though. I'm sure that will have some impact on the markets later on. What's, uh, what are traders up to right now? Well, one of the big stories moving shares in Asia today is this news that China hit a record trade surplus in February. Exports up 48% year on year, a really big change. Uh, so we've seen the Shanghai Composite up, uh, trading up on 1.9%. Uh, on that news, the rest of the Asian markets are trading down, as you can see. Uh, the Nikkei in Japan uh, down almost 1% this after the world's third largest economy uh, revised down its growth forecast for the last three months of 2014. That figure, 0.4% uh, growth as opposed to 0.6%, which had been hoped for before. All right, moving on then. Uh, Sunday, as we have been reporting, was International Women's Day. And Stephen, uh, you're taking a look at equality in the boardroom. Yeah, so on Friday, we had a law passed in Germany which enforced quotas on listed companies for the number of women they have in the boardroom, imposing a quota of 30%. Uh, on boardroom staff. France already has a 20% quota in place and that's due to double to 40% by 2017. But the number of women in top positions remains low, as Charlotte Hawkins now reports. Greeting her staff with a warm handshake, Sylvie Bocquet knows everyone's names. As head of a Parisian department store, she has nearly 250 people working for her. Whether you're stacking shelves or you're a director of I don't know what, I take an equal interest in everyone. I don't think that's because I'm a woman, I just like fairness. Taking over from a man, when Sylvie arrived, she changed more than just the decor, opening up more positions to women. A push for gender equality, while women are still minorities in managerial roles. Once a week, Sylvie gets together with her supervisors. For six years, the mother of three has led the team with a personal touch. I've really enjoyed Sophie's management style because there's a maternal side to it. There's a real difference to before, but whether that's about men and women, I'm not sure. To climb the career ladder, Sylvie invested the help of a coach. Both of them refute the idea there's a feminine style of management. Honestly, I think I coached her like I would have coached a man. I mean, I did specific things for her, but I didn't do anything special because of her being a woman. Despite her own success, the 52-year-old feels gender equality has a long way to go, especially when it comes to salaries. Women in France are still paid 8.5% less than men for the same job. 
looking picture perfect there, and that leads us neatly on to our final story. Instagram uh, users here in France are going to be seeing advertisements in their news feeds as of today. That's right. The photo sharing app is introducing advertisements here. It's the first non-English speaking market they're making this uh, change in. It had been introduced in the United States for users back in 2013 and also later for users in the UK, Canada and Australia. So brands including Lacoste, Air France, Yves Saint Laurent and Coca-Cola have already signed up to put their ads in Facebook users for, uh, in Facebook uh, feeds I search for users here in France. Uh, it's supposed to be a very good uh, mode of advertising though because aver on average users spend 21 minutes a day on Instagram. Uh, so advertisers are flocking as you can imagine to sign up for that. I imagine they will be. Thanks very much Stephen Carroll, our business editor, back in about an hour's time with more for you.